Hi friends, this is the E! News for January 25th. This past weekend, uh, somewhere between 80 and 90 of us uh, went to our all-church retreat that we have at Ligonier Camp and Conference Center. We had a wonderful time, just a joy of being together. And truly, there were uh, infants through 80-year-olds there. And we appreciated the intergenerational a mix of people, and really had a blast being the family of God in a new setting. Thanks be to God for those who organized and planned that, and uh, a thank you to Don and Ginny Dawson, as well as Rick Dayton, who led the worship here uh, in the Sanctuary at Elfin Wild Church while we were gone. We are grateful for all the opportunities we have to grow in fellowship with one another in the name of Christ, and the All Church Retreat is one of those special times. I wanted to also just remind you that this coming Sunday, January 29th, we will be worshiping at the regular hours of 8.30 and 11.10, Sunday school for all ages at 9.45, so please come and be a part of that. We will celebrate baptism at the 11.10 service, and then following uh, that service, we will gather together in Fellowship Hall about 12.15, uh, 12.30, to have our annual congregational meeting. And I hope that you will come and be a part of that. We will share a very light soup lunch together while we meet and talk about the faithfulness of God that we have known in this past year and years and sort of also look forward to what is coming uh, in the upcoming year and years. It's always good to be on the same page and to recount uh, the mighty acts of God, even as we know them in our particular life together as Elfenwald Church. So please come this Sunday to that uh, annual meeting. I also wanted to remind us that on February 5th, we will have a communion and celebrate uh, a baptism at that uh, on those uh, on that Sunday as well, and also announce to you tonight for the first time uh, that we will have a um, an Israel trip presentation that evening. So Sunday, February fifth at six o'clock in Fellowship Hall, uh, Rick Dayton took a lot of pictures on our trip to Israel uh, after Christmas and. Uh, we'll have people there to tell some of their favorite memories about that journey. So if you're interested at all in finding out what people learned, how they grew, what their experience was, please come and join us as we gather together and share our memories. I will also have a sign-up sheet there for anyone that is interested in our next trip which looks like it might be after Christmas in 2024 into the January of 2025. So I hope that you'll come and be a part of that as well. And then finally, three weeks from now on February 12th, we'll gather for worship together and we'll also be welcoming representatives from Ligonier Camp and have our Camp Sunday, highlighting opportunities for children uh, to go to Ligonier this summer. So please put that on your calendar as well. Some of our folks who were signed up for the retreat this past weekend couldn't come because of the flu and other illness that seems to be very uh, contagious in this season right now. Uh, Van was telling me today in her afternoon class at preschool, she only had three children uh, because of sickness and some people who are away. Uh, and I keep hearing stories, more and more people who are getting sick, and it sounds like this version of the flu is a pretty severe version, knocking people out and putting them in bed for a day or two at least. So please remember to be considerate uh, of one another, uh, to be flexible uh, with people, but also, if I could, to be prayerful. This week in confirmation class, that's what we're talking about. What does it mean to uh, practice prayer, to have the discipline of praying uh, to God. And so I thought I'd read from the book of James, chapter 5, and the Word of God says this, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. 
Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. Now, I'm not sure if you're in the business of praying for rain or against rain. Uh, I know that people automatically pray against snow in this season. Uh, But more than that, uh, what I want to encourage us to remember uh, tonight is to pray for one another to pray for those who are sick, to remember to lift them to God for their healing. Um, It sounds so basic, and it is fundamental and foundational. But I also want to extend that invitation and say, if you have the ability, if you're at all comfortable, or maybe if God can stretch you out of your comfort zone, Maybe call a friend that you know is sick and pray with them on the phone. Or visit them and pray with them in person. I believe that prayer is one of those practices that God honors and appreciates. And that as we pray for one another, we will simply grow in our dependence upon the Lord and in our own faith walk as we want to encourage others to overcome their illness or sickness or dis-ease. So it's a simple message tonight. Let's continue to grow and be a people of deep and abiding prayer, praying for one another by name, uh, lifting up things that matter to God and asking Him for His wisdom and His guidance and being forthright to cry out for healing and help. That's my encouragement to you, just as I have encouraged the confirmation class this week. Uh, It's a simple thing, but it matters. Let's just keep that conversation with God, uh, that prayer uh, happening uh, among us. In the scriptures, the disciples ask Jesus. They simply say, teach us how to to pray. And I don't know if you've ever thought of that. I don't know how to pray. And Jesus simply gave them the Lord's Prayer as an example and a teaching tool of how to pray. Even if we don't have the words that we can come up with on our own, we can use the words of the Lord's Prayer together. So I hope that you will take that as a word of encouragement. We do care about you. If you would like somebody to pray with you, please reach out and call someone. Call here if you have no one else to reach out to. I would be happy and the staff would be glad uh, to pray for and with you. We love you. We hope to see you soon. Take care. God bless. Have a great day.